I uh, no, I didn't buy a twelve hundred fifty dollar chain. I seventeen hundred dollar chain. No, she I she told me that the chain was yeah seventeen hundred dollars. So how much did paying? Well, I go. She goes. It's on sale for twelve hundred. I go. All right. And all right. Thanks. Have a nice day. And she goes. Okay. Well, like, what would it take for you to leave with this chain today? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm like maybe a thousand. And she's like, Okay. Let me see what I can do. A thousand. Like, yeah. Like Four hundred, Christy D'Agostino. Yeah. Well. But I don't want to like. I mean, I'm probably gonna get a chain soon, bro. You are. Yeah. Well, don't do what I did. Do the I opposite of what me. I did. I'm not going to do what you did. But you know what? This is how I'm such a, like, I really am, like, kind of a sucker. Because a few years ago, I cleaned out Woody Allen's basement. And I, so we got profit share. Right. for, And we could charge whatever we wanted to. And right. he wasn't even there. And at the end, his driver was like, oh, whatever it costs. And I didn't charge him the maximum amount. I charged him, like, earnestly. Why? Because I'm a, f- I'm like a sap. I don't you know. No, I mean it's funny. Like I, he, I actually think it's good that you're like that mostly. But like, I don't know. It's weird. And you're obsessed with all this like wise guy shit. And you can't even like overcharge Woody Allen. Yeah. What's going on, Mike? I like. I guess I, I'm like too much of a fan, even though he has so much money and is a child molester. I was gonna say he's fine. He's hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. I don't think he's got anything to worry about. Yeah. Or he was. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if it was actually Woody who ordered the hit? <laughs> on Epstein? Like, I can't I can't take the, the yeah. agitation. Yeah. And the road is going to do a whole new book. And I have a script about a seven-year-old who fucks a 20-year-old in Barcelona. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, it won't get financing. Yeah. We, he we killed need the, to kill. Yeah, it's like bullets over Broadway. <laughs> he killed the guards, too. Yeah, he had the guards killed. He just like, and then, and then there won't be any security footage left. That could be it just be it's a, a heart attack gun. Yeah. That could be an episode of the show, Woody's Body Count. Woody's oh, yeah. Body, like, the Clintons don't have to worry. They, they, they're never organized. I'll do it. He's <laughs> just, like, the most efficient killer in the cabal. Yeah. <laughs> well, you already know who it is, folks. We're talking to Michael Brooks again. Uh, and uh, Malin's back. You remember Malin from a couple episodes ago? Hey. I, uh, I did Michael's show recently, and we were talking about the new uh, Amazon um, show with Jim from The Office. And... Uh, <sighs> About how they're gonna, about, about how Jack Ryan has to stop Venezuela from nuking us. Yeah, yeah, it's a totally credible thing, and it makes sense that someone who's famous for making well, I don't know faces <laughs> would definitely be in charge of, of uh, stymieing that. Mm. Jim from the Office did like a weird Libya movie too, right? Yeah, he did um the one on uh. Wasn't it just called Benghazi or something? He just oh. did Benghazi. Yeah, I feel like yeah. Jim from, is Jim from the office like super right wing? No, he's he's like been like a like Democratic donor or something. But maybe he's just like finding a niche. That well, he's a dem. I mean, he's yeah. like one of these like woke CIA people. Yeah, like, yeah. Use the appropriate pronouns when we remove your government. <laughs> one of those types of people. It's like now we're gonna um yeah. di- we're gonna yeah. rendition you to a friendly government to have your toenails cut off, and I'd just like to make sure that I'm identifying you correctly <laughs> before we throw you in this bag. They remove a guy's testicles and then they call him she. They use the they, they switch to her, you know, she her. Do you identify as a her now that we've done this, or is it they? Yeah. And if you could just please clarify, because you're not gonna be getting any sleep the next seventy two hours. That was like uh, Homeland. You know how you noticed how like. Oh, that was I haven't seen it. by the CIA. It was so, well, I haven't seen it recently, but I saw it like during the Obama era mm-hmm. and how like it's like the same show as 24, but 24 is like George W. Bush era. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're fucking idiots. Like, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, Bissoud. Let's fuck it. We're going to put a fucking car battery on your dick because you have a bomb. And then during Homeland, it was like the Obama era. So it was all like, you know, when I studied anthropology at Swarthmore, I didn't think I was going to have to put your dick in a car battery. Like <laughs> yeah. It was all the same shit, but it was all like, oh, I feel so bad doing this. It's yeah, such a yeah, moral yeah. drain to have to kill you with drones. It's more of like a measured <laughs> approach it to was, like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? It was all like liberal, There's like self-justification. With 24 like the same was, result. There was a Freedom of Information Act request for the research that I did for, for Mike that I helped out with. And um, 24 is on the list of um, Pentagon approved like crap and homeland is and of CIA. course yeah totally yeah oh so yeah it's the same same narrative structure for they've sure they've done not they've um influenced 900 movies but homeland's no, better because she like TV wears a hijab out of respect right yeah for the yeah no that's very right homeland yeah. she's like i understood that in lebanon <laughs> mm-hmm. I, Le- all right 
Do you remember a movie called The Recruit with uh, Al Pacino and Colin Farrell? Yes, with the uh, with the newspaper recruiting in the bar. He does some type. No, some I think he's CIA. No, he is, or, but out. But Pacino shows him some type of like dumb like crossword puzzle in a bar. Okay. To help talk him into being in the CIA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I remember that. Because when they introduce Pacino's character, some guy goes, "Yeah, this guy's one of the best." In Palestine, a few uh, a few years ago, he sees this lady. Pu- he sees this old woman pushing a baby carriage. It's hanging a little low. He and he uh, and he blows her away, and it turns out she was Hamas, <laughs> and the baby <laughs> carriage was full of explosives. <laughs> just like, he just <laughs> killed an old woman because the, the baby carriage looked funny. I like that though. That but again, that's still like that's a different time. That was yeah. just like now. It was just like yeah, like actually. Some Israeli soldier just uploaded it. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! We just shot her in the face. <laughs> yeah, they, they love it. Yeah. It's like it's like a kid uploads murdering a mother in cold blood. Some IDF guy, and then the IDF spokesperson is like, "We felt very threatened because of the Holocaust." <laughs> yeah, and he was thinking of Shinda's list when he saw the mother, and um, the Palestinians will not stop. So, uh, if the baby stroller is not so simple when it's in the Middle East, my friend. Yeah, there's something funny about that baby carriage. <laughs> 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 Boom. Um, what I actually like about that is that there's no way that they were doing this, but Pacino turns out to be like the bad guy in that movie, so it could have just been like an early indication that, yeah. like, yeah, he was just like murdering Palestinian civilians, and he could, he knew he could get away with oh, it. Okay, no, I th- you know? but I think that is. I'm sure. No, no, of course. It, yeah, you respect them. No, that was definitely some type of like line that's just like, yeah, Ari, Ari Shenenbaum and Paramount's gonna love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about this movie because I watched it before I did your show and we didn't get to talk about it but um, I remember I, I, I read so the movie's called Rules of Engagement and it came out in 1998 and it's about how it's about how Samuel L. Jackson is on trial mm-hmm. for murdering 80 people in Yemen yeah like it's not just like it's like children old dudes ladies mm-hmm. like just people who are like standing in front of an embassy like throwing rocks yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah so uh, so mike has seen and it, it but came I out in 2000 right 98 like, 80, 98 yeah. so, so that even came out even before that was like pre we're gonna go massacre a lot of people in afghanistan and iraq yeah. propaganda that was like that was just laying the groundwork mm-hmm. yeah um yeah it was like before it's time um or maybe they were thinking of somalia Maybe that's what happened. They were thinking of Mogadishu. But anyways, all right. That's so Black Hawk Down. Sam, yeah, Black Hawk Down. Yeah. But then that, I'm saying but that happened in 93. Maybe that's what they were. But so Samuel Jackson was like, there are too many Yemenis on this fucking street. I have street. had it with these motherfucking Yemenis in this motherfucking embassy. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to tell you about the beginning of the movie. So it starts right, off, he's in Vietnam with Tommy Lee Jones. And they're like, there's some combat. And then... Um, it's it's just it's just kind of, the beginning of the movie is kind of boring because there's like this combat and there's like yeah. they do this thing where like when someone dies they die in like slow motion like it's Max Payne or something I don't know yeah. if they do that anymore um, but I don't think they do that anymore the attention spans are too shot yeah. for slow mo yeah. but what exactly is happening in that scene they they capture some Viet Cong guys so the beginning is like belly basically what's that <laughs> like uh, Nas and DMX <laughs> they go in it's slow motion. They yeah. kill a bunch of people in the club and take the money. No but it's all in slow motion, yeah. so it's kind of... Yeah, no beat-down oh, nice. It's basically the same thing. No, wait, there is a beat-down shot, actually, because he shoots a POW. Like, he's a... Yeah. In Vietnam, they already do that? He, well, yeah. So they don't... So they, so they <laughs> like how they do, like, all right, we're going to make this guy sympathetic after massacring 80 <laughs> civilians. How do we set that up? First thing, he's going to fucking kill a POW at point-blank yeah. range. Yeah. That'll show you that he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. He did it. He did it to intimidate another POW to tell them to call to tell that guy to tell another people like call. Because there were too crap. many snakes. Yep. Yeah. So that was the thing. They 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 capture they capture some Vietnamese guys and then Samuel L. Jackson is telling the guy to like he's like call off your men because there's a there's I guess there's more Viet Cong guys advancing yeah. and uh, he's like call off your men and the guy like won't do it and then he's like do it and he like puts a gun to the the, mm-hmm. the head of the radio operator. Yeah. And he. Shoots the radio operator in the head, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then the guy calls off the attack. Yeah. So, so basically, what happened was was like 
Samuel Jackson and Tommy Lee Jones are there as part of a literally genocidal war that killed like mil- millions of Vietnamese people, including like melting children with napalm and like fire bombs. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And right? these guys were like villagers who took up arms to defend their country, which is like universally legitimate under mm-hmm. any form of recognizable law. And then Samuel Jackson was like, and I'm going to kill you as a POW. Yeah. So basically, yeah. in a happy version, Tommy Lee Jones and Samuel Jackson would have been clipped immediately in this movie. Yeah. Well, right. yeah. Well, I, yeah. And the way they set it up is like he's trying to save his Marines by being like, tell your men to fall back. Right. And Tommy Lee Jones gets shot in the leg. Yeah. I bet he did. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, a very Tom, limp. That's a, a very Tommy Lee Jones kind of thing. Just like, I still have that bullet with me from Nam. In those, in those scenes. They definitely like obscure your view of Tommy Lee Jones's like eye line and like his forehead because they don't want to do makeup on it. Oh, okay. And, like, they, yeah, like it's clearly it's an old dude and like he has not aged at all. Yeah, he doesn't look like he belongs in Vietnam. They're supposed to be young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually was thinking. I'm the actually, oldest guy in Nam, baby. <laughs> Samuel Jackson Why, didn't look so that old? young either. I, I did watch that yeah, part no, of the movie. Yeah. They they definitely both look like they were yeah. like wow. <laughs> Did yeah, they go to like, <laughs> <laughs> was like, were they left <laughs> back? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> they, they did the not. Yeah, they definitely both seem aged out. For yeah, they sure. did the Brett Michaels like, f- like bandana thing over his face. Right. You know, uh, Samuel L. Jackson's. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He grabbed those uh, bandanas. Yeah. So then they cut to like modern day. So Samuel L. Jackson's like a colonel and they send sure. him on this rescue mission to Yemen. And he's got to rescue the ambassador of Yemen. From Gandhi, the embassy, yeah, mm-hmm. played by the great Ben Kingsley, who I think mm-hmm. is maybe one of the best actors. Yeah. So they o- so they open on this scene at the embassy, and there's like yeah. so there's a crowd of people protesting, and this scene lasts I don't know what would you say like maybe ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah, it's too long to tell you the truth. Yeah. Like it could definitely, I mean, the whole movie could be cut, but this part could get some cuts. But the, yeah. f- the whole movie could be cut. <laughs> the funniest part is that they're like they're the the protesters are chanting something, yeah. and it's just a very simple like, and it's going yeah. on for the whole scene. But they don't even bother to like tell you really what they're saying or why yeah. maybe they're mad. Yeah. You know, they're just right. like they're oh, like they're the same unit like yeah. actually ran over a family <laughs> yeah, 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 last yeah. week. Right. <laughs> or like the ambassador embezzled like ten million dollars from like the state from treasury. Yeah. Like they both are working with the Saudis to like drain the last water aquifer in the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. They're chanting. Yeah, Buckle. none of that is explained. They're just like the un. Undif- no. They're just like the undifferentiated mass of Arabs yelling. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. And Very traditional Hollywood trope. They even did the, ay, 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 like, you know how they... Ugh, do it again? <laughs> yeah, do that a lot. I'm not going to do it. I'm you not going to do it again. You, you wanna, know, like, yeah. that, like, Come on. Like, you want to like, use that as a sound drop. Yeah, yeah. That's like actually... Soft, like I, that's that thing. what you're doing? Yeah. By the pro tip, I will not do. But okay, you're thanks. talking about. No, but I was... Okay. No, yeah, that, that, that like, I was actually... I'll do it, but it's bonus content. You get to subscribe to the Patreon. It was funny, no, because I remember years ago, I was in... I was in Jordan and we were taking a bus trip and like I definitely thought that that was like that I was like I probably had seen it in a movie like this and I was like Jesus Christ yeah. and then like and then at the beginning of the bus trip they do that and then say Allah Akbar it's like good luck even like in uh Back to the Future when it's like the Libyans the Libyans it's like mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah Gaddafi wasn't like an ideal dude yeah but you know, Ronald Reagan did like literally kill one of his babies. Really? You know? Yeah, he did. Yeah, they bombed one of his residences and killed one of his like very small children. Jeez. Yeah. Like, See you in hell, baby Gaddafi. <laughs> 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 That's one more win for me. <laughs> <laughs> you had and then, that. And then, like two years later, he's just like, I personally killed one of Gaddafi's <laughs> babies. <laughs> you know how Reagan said that? Yeah. He confused, like. I mean, he either was going he either was going senile early or he was lying, but he literally confused a movie that he did because he was not in Europe at all during World War Two. Mm-hmm. And so he said that he liberated concentration camps, but he did that in a movie. Yeah, no, there's ev- like he was going senile. Oh, really? During yeah, yeah, he's he's just just like, like, yeah. No, I don't believe he's going senile. He's a lying motherfucker. He's, 
The timeline for Alzheimer's? I mean, but he was always it's a liar. Fun. That's true. Um, I got to tell you the story real quick because I, when I was in high school, my psychology teacher had this Marine recruiter come to talk to us. And we were studying like conditioning, mm-hmm. but she like wanted him to come so she could, so we could see as a class how people are conditioned, which is like kind of fucked up. Mm-hmm. But the guy's talking about like being in the Marines and like being a sniper. And he's like, yeah, I'm a sniper. I have 11 confirmed kills. He's like, my last kill, Muammar Gaddafi. <laughs> and he just like, this was like 2005. <laughs> <laughs> He just bought like a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. He just stood up in our class and said he killed Gaddafi. <laughs> yeah. What you see is a body double today. Mm-hmm. Don't believe it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, hell yeah, dude. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> that is the most New Jersey reaction. <laughs> I'm be like, dad, dad, this black guy came to class and said he killed Gaddafi. It's like really, <laughs> but he was just on. He was he was on his fucking tent the other day. Like no, no, no. He was a sniper and he killed Gaddafi. It was awesome. I'm thinking about joining the military. <laughs> I want to be a marine, <laughs> like <laughs> like Drew Carey. <laughs> well, for so, for some reason, I did go to the marine recruitment office. They you like did? got me to go. Yeah, and they were like, you know, Drew Carey wow. was a marine. They were trying to get me to because they knew I liked comedy. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's the same. I was I was talking with somebody who does like uh, he does a lot of work like uh, in Lebanon and Northern Ireland around like demilitarization, and he's like, it, you know, just you, you can think whatever you want, but it's literally it's exactly the same process, basically, whether mm-hmm. you're talking about the military or Al Qaeda or the IRA, like it's all this it, the clan, like it's like you. He's like, you got to you find young boys, and you're mm-hmm. like. Do you feel unpopular mm-hmm. or are you missing your dad? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. but it's always the same basic structure. Wow. And so for you, it was, I guess Hezbollah would have been like, <laughs> we actually have a lot of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, Hezbollah would have. They're like, you. we love, we love Opie and Anthony, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we listen to it every day. That would be day. great, though, if that was, <laughs> if they were like Hasids, they were just like, well, I mean, we, they're not. Jewish, if they want to debase themselves, is quite entertaining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they can do what they want. <laughs> so let's get back to the movie. So in the yeah. scene at the embassy, they keep they keep cutting to the image of like this guy with a sniper rifle, and yeah. next to him is a woman in a hijab, like holding a baby, mm-hmm. like she brought the baby for him to shoot at the Marines. Um, yeah, and yeah. the crowd. So the crowd, the whole time, the crowd is doing this chant. Yeah, they don't. Tra- they don't tell you what it is. They don't translate it. But the whole scene is just people going. And then, uh, so Samuel L. Jackson, like he, he like runs through the embassy. There's like bullets flying all I'm over so the place. So sick of these motherfucking Yemenis <laughs> in the motherfucking embassy. That was my line that got deleted, but you can take it because I <laughs> fucked Wait, up. you did it, but I set you yeah. up. You set me up. Yeah, I did. I mean, basically, I. Was this is a genesis. collective. This is a collective effort. Oh, it's anyway. fine. It's Mike's it's joke. It's fine. Tank. Yeah. Sure. No, but we're so. I did so. the Samuel L. Jackson motherfucker <laughs> joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, other people want to take credit <laughs> <laughs> for snakes on the plane in the embassy, but I did it. Um. So then he like. So then the kid. He goes. He goes up to Ben Kingsley's kid, and he's like. What's your name, son? He's like, Justin. He's like, all right, Justin, I want you to hang on to me and stay close. And he, like, picks up the kid and runs to the helicopter. And Ben Kingsley's like, thank you, Colonel Childers. Or, yeah, Colonel. Yeah, Colonel Childers. He's like, thank you, Colonel Childers. I owe you my life. And uh, he's like, get out of here, sir. So then. <laughs> <laughs> but also he holds the kid, like, like above his helmet. Like, mm-hmm. if someone's looking to pick off anybody, it's that kid's head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't try to protect. It was just more like a horsey ride that he was bringing the kid to the, to the helicopter with. Right. There's nothing that made sense about that movie. No. Um, so then the helicopter with the ambassador leaves, and then uh, all the Marines are getting shot mm-hmm. at. One of them gets killed. And um, it looks, it's pretty obvious that the protesters all have guns. They're, even though the crowd is full of like women, children, mm-hmm. elderly people, they're all shooting at the Marines, and 
uh, they're like, sir, what do we do? <laughs> and, and Samuel L. Jackson's like, he's like, open fire. He's like, what, <laughs> sir, what? And he's like, do I have to repeat myself? He's like, open fire. How long have you been waiting to just fucking take pot shots at these people? Yeah. Now you have an excuse. Yeah. You're welcome. So, uh, so, so they, they fire on the crowd and it's, it's maybe like the most violent scene yeah. I've ever, like they do, they, cl- they do close ups of like, Young people getting shot full of holes. They show an old guy with like his. There's blood coming out his, of his, his face. Yeah, his face is just like a giant hole now, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty weird. And yeah. this is like supposed to be justified. Uh, yeah, and this is weird because this yeah. is like a couple of years before. I mean, obviously stuff like this happens all the time, but the uh, Blackwater guys in Iraq. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where they actually just like at a traffic stop, they just like lit it up. Yeah. On the street in a way that was so blatant, they even got like criminal charges pressed against them. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't even think I think they still got away with it, but Jeez. yeah, two thousand. What was Blackwater? It was a private company. Blackwater yeah. is a private security company. Yeah. yeah, Eric Prince, who's the head of it, is the uh, brother of um, Betsy. Betsy DeVos. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What a family. Yeah, family um, money, yo. Yeah, so so they they open fire. A bunch of people get killed. The crowd yeah. scatters. They sh- there's a there's a bunch of like dead bodies. Yeah. There's dead kids. And then Sam okay, I want Colonel Childers to run against Donald Trump. Okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that guy knows how to. <laughs> he, that guy, he, he would be on MSNBC now talking about Russian assets. Yeah, Omar would be like, I know some people are upset about the dead Yemenis. Guess what? I want that attitude against Donald Trump. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For this election, I want you to spray that crowd like Colonel Childers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be at the Hooky Loud Lounge <laughs> in Des Moines, Iowa, and then at Mohican Sun. I want to thank Senator Heidi Hydecap, Jenna Jameson, <laughs> and Millie Vanilli. <laughs> yeah. And Scott Bayo for Scott coming Bayo. for being here tonight. You've been terrific. <laughs> <laughs> I know this they don't make any sense. It's just it's just the same it's the same like politically incorrect was like, okay, here's the gimmick, right? Like mm-hmm. like let's Pauly Shore will sit next to Bill Bradley. Ha ha ha. And now you just realize like as it goes on, it's like but this is just this fucking guy's brain. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, he's just yeah. like, I I read People Magazine. Yeah. Okay, I want to fuck Superhead. <laughs> and I love MSNBC. <laughs> That's and, the guest lineup. And does anyone ever tell, does, does anyone ever tell Bill Maher no? I can't for see coming that on ever the show, happening. or you mean like his assistants for who he wants on just, the show? Is there anyone in his life that tells him no in any capacity? No way. Unless, Unless it's if like it's a, Ice Cube. Yeah. He's telling him he can't use that Unless word. it's like a prostitute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless when, yeah. yeah, Ice Cube. Right. Like I, was, I, love, I, love, I love how culture moves, though. Like, when we were yeah. little kids, it was like, Ice Cube, man. man he's scary. Yeah. And like, 20 years. Like, what do you think Ice Cube's going to be in 20 years? Eh, he's going to be, like, patting some, like, fucking dope, aged-out boomer comedian on the back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and telling him that, like, he's still his homie, but he probably shouldn't, like, joke yeah. about being a field. Like, it wasn't even just that he said that word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He did it the most, like, flip it. Like, it wasn't an impression. Yeah. It wasn't like, a, wow, you're really going to try to pull that off, Bill. It was just like, I'm bored interviewing Ben Sass. <laughs> 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 what can I do? <laughs> oh, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> I felt up at least five girls from two live crew videos. I could say it. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll get back to that in a little bit, but, uh, I, um, so Samuel L. Jackson gets back yep. to America and he gets called into like his boss's office yeah. and they're like, we've had, we've got, you're being charged with murder. And he's like, murder, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he can't believe, <laughs> sir. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you're on trial for murdering, uh, 80. It, 80 you, it people. finds, yeah. you find out like 80 people died right. at the yeah. embassy. Yeah. Calm down, Ringo. <laughs> Sorry. What's another Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> it's like, I mean, yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell. Yeah. That's like a, but it, the the movie does kind of have that 
you know, that essence. Yeah, but yeah. that movie they did deserve. He didn't he like isn't that movie the one who where he like killed some clan guys? Yeah. 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 So, so right. That's a that's a bad we're gonna use that same line for massacring eighty civilians in Yemen, huh? Yeah. Um All right, so they tell him he's uh he killed eighty so, people. So he like he's like, oh, but I was just doing my job. Like I don't understand. I acted with dignity as a you know as a marine. Um, so cut to like a couple scenes later, he's driving to court. Yeah. And uh, there's protesters like blocking the door, and they're like, "You're a baby killer! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you!" <laughs> 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 Which is Are you sure they didn't just like drive up to a Planned Parenthood by mistake? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah they. Th- well, actually, what they did was to f- to because because of their budget, they couldn't yeah. afford to pay extras. Yeah. So they found someone to drop a bomb on an actual village in Yemen. So yeah. they were real protesters, mm-hmm. and then they had him put on a uniform. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they were like, there "Yeah, go. go ahead." Um, but so some some guy like, it was so weird. Some he. So they like the protesters like get his door open and a kid spits on him and then he's like who are you to spit on this uniform he like starts beating up the kid <laughs> <laughs> it's a several Jackson just wiling out on people alright yeah. so I like this so basically in the course of the movie he's wilding so, out he's wilding out you know what that's what I want against Donald Trump okay liberals are so worried about Yemeni babies <laughs> yeah. that they lose sight of weed being legal here. Um, no, he... Uh, so he killed the POW. Then he massacred 80 civilians. Yeah. yeah. And then he beat whales on kids. I mean, actually, the last one is the most justifiable, but... Yeah. Okay, so... All right, so he's... He's but really he gets showing ki- that he... Yeah. Is not irrationally violent and that he's cool. He's totally fine. Mm-hmm. He's never done anything fucked up. Well, I mean, the kid did disrespect the uniform. I'm not talking about... Well, I don't care about the uniform part. They, he got spit on. You're going to respond to that. That's fine. Yeah. But we're talking about murdered a POW mm-hmm. and then told his unit to just light up a group of protesters who, of course, like all of them carrying guns. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so then, so so he like, he's going to court and he gets Tommy Lee Jones to defend him, who's like his old friend that he was in Vietnam with. Wait, so has um, Tommy Lee Jones become a lawyer? Is that what happened? He's now yeah, a lawyer. Cause yeah, because he got shot in the leg in Vietnam. Oh, so yeah. you go to law school when your leg gets fucked up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, I'm a pussy now. Well, because we watched the trailer. study law school. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, also, but like in the movie, he's like, I don't know, my record's not that good in JAG, so like he ends up being like a shitty lawyer in the movie, didn't he? Say oh, that? maybe, yeah. yeah he's yeah, also yeah. an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. All right. So then he defends Samuel Jackson. Yeah. So he's like Samuel Jackson boy. gets up on stage and is like, I've given everything for this country, and what is this country giving back to me, type of thing. Yeah. Does that happen? Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing. It. Well, bef- so. It's a li- like he just starts yelling at people, which like you can't <laughs> fucking do. Like you, you're the not good a defense credible, strategy. you're not a credible yeah. witness on the stand if you just start yelling at the people who make you upset. And in some ways, like it kind of proves their point, yeah. right? And Guy Pierce yeah. plays like kind of like the sniveling. I guess if yeah. you hate the country, <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you yeah. hate soldiers, it yeah, that's true. Wait, yeah. so there's a there's like a there's like a bad like prosecutor. There's You're like a bad like, prosecutor. Yeah, you killed yeah. the civilians. Yeah. 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 You little bitch. Yeah. You whiny. Uh, and they wait, wait, Samuel Jackson calls him a little bitch. From the no, stand. but that's sort of like implied throughout the movie. You know, like, I always you know, wonder. He's yeah. never been to combat. He's he's like an academic. Well, of course he's, not. You know, if he had yeah. been to combat, he would have killed some kids, obviously. <laughs> right. Yeah. Did you guys see Donald Trump's tweet about Tulsi Gabbard and uh, Jill Stein? No. He said, crooked Hillary is calling Congresswoman <laughs> Chelsea Gabbard a Russian asset and Jill Stein. And Green Party candidate Jill Stein, he's like, as you may remember, I was called a big Russia lover. And then he puts in parentheses, he's like, actually, I do like Russian people. <laughs> I like all people. She's got crazy. <laughs> it's, it's is is he, is he still funny, though? I mean, yeah. That's what's kind of like amazing. He is basically still funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as long as these idiots on TV and everything else keep just making about entertainment and being about being offended by this and that thing yeah. he said, 
he'll win on that terrain because he is the most entertaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's true. Um, Let's talk about that scene. Did you see the scene where he goes to Yemen? Where Tommy Lee Jones goes to Yemen? No, I don't think I did. Okay, cool. I'm going to have so much fun (laughs) telling both of you guys about this. Part of his legal... He, yeah, so he's like, I got it because t- so Tommy Lee Jones is Samuel L. Jackson's lawyer. He's like, I got to go to Yemen and like investigate this. He so they cut the first thing they show when he goes to Yemen is two guys sword fighting on the street. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I got to just can I just be woke for a second and mm-hmm. just say like. Right now, we are, you know literally fueling and supporting like a genocide happening there right this yeah, second. It's mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's just a lot. Anyways, okay. yeah. two guys are sword fighting. Tom so, Lee so Jones goes there. So Great. there's two guys sword fighting. He's like dressed like, you know, as a civilian. He's got like a polo shirt and khaki mm-hmm. pants. And some other guy comes up to him. He's like, he's like, hey, how's it going? I'd salute you, but there's snipers. Uh, and then as he's saying that, uh, um, a camel walks by. Uh, so there's like just like a camel walking around the city. <laughs> Like the city that they're that they're in is actually one of the largest ones in Yemen. This isn't mm-hmm. like a village situation, mm-hmm. you know. Wait, where yeah. are they probably where are they in, um, uh, in Sanaa? So yes, in the capital. Yes. Okay. All right. So, anyways, yeah. all right. So guys are sort of yeah. <laughs> yeah. A camel walks by. Oh my god. <laughs> so he so so Jesus Tommy Lee. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> There's a book I think it's called Real Bad Arabs. Yeah. Like real. Yeah. Yeah. They made it a documentary, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so then, he, so Tommy Lee Jones goes to the scene of the massacre, and this is probably the most insane part of the movie. There's a little girl walking around, and the little girl has one, she's on crutches, and she has one leg. And uh, he goes, uh, she like walks up to him, and he's like, "Oh, hey, little girl, what's your name?" And she's like, Tala, Tala. like she says, she says the whatever the Arabic they speak Arabic in Yemen. Yes. Okay. She says the Arabic word for killer. And she's like, she's yelling. She's like, kill her, kill her. And then a bunch of guys like approach. It's Tommy Lee Jones, a bunch of like scary Arab guys. And they're like, blah, 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 blah. like they're like, get out of here, you, you, you baby killer. And they like chase him down the street. Uh, and then he like runs away. But it was supposed to be like scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then uh, it turns out that like he didn't really, he didn't find anything when he goes to Yemen. Yeah. Uh, cut to the next scene. So the, the the little girl with one leg, right? So cut to the next scene. The national security advisor is watching a tape of the massacre, and you see that little girl with a gun shooting <laughs> shooting at the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's like the part that he just happens to be. What know, I always wonder <laughs> about is like with these movies, like the guy who wrote um, Red Dawn was actually like a crackpot right wing guy yeah. and he wrote it because he was like a crazy right winger. This movie was written by a guy named Jim Webb, I think, who was a Wait, this is written by Jim Webb, the senator? I think so, the senator. Are you fucking serious? Let me let me confirm that. Jesus Christ, man. Uh God. Once that second. guy that guy yeah, was you know, a, he's a That guy was his yeah, he was a Democratic senator. He had that moment in 2016 where they asked them on stage like if they had an enemy they have ever overcome or something, and he was just like, yup, and he's not around today. And he had like this big smile about some guy he fucking killed in Vietnam. <laughs> um, all right, that's crazy. Okay. let me. I'm just confirming. I didn't, I didn't okay. make I mean, the I connection it. that it was, it was that same Jim Webb. He was a novelist and a screenwriter, okay. and it was true. That is okay. true. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Story by, story by James Webb, uh, American po- politician and author. He has served in the United yep. States sec- <sighs> senator from Virginia. So what is he? Just like a psycho or like a crazy war hawk? I mean, I think he. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of like a guy. Where I mean, he was actually sort of like, kind of like, we should fight less wars because of like you know it costs us money and stuff. But I mean, clearly he was like. You know, yeah, yeah, like basically, like, you know, sometimes yeah. you gotta blow a little girl's leg off. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you dare tell me how to fight a war. <laughs> no, he totally, he was actually one of those. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he became, I think he's a Trump supporter now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was, uh, he was, he was, um, it was kind of, he was, when he was in the Senate, he was actually like, Jesus Christ, man, politics were so fucking bad. 
it was so weird because you had this like crazy right wing guy who got elected to the Senate as a Democrat, and he beat this ultra racist guy George Allen. Mm -hmm. And George Allen grew up, I think, in California, and his dad was like a football coach, and was obsessed with the Southern Confederacy. So it's like not only was he a racist piece of shit, it was like well, they did have some good generals. He adopted, yeah, the terrific generals. (laughs) He adopted it as like a culture motif for him. Mm-hmm. So he lost to Jim Webb and then Jim Webb like, yeah, I mean, Jim Webb was crazy, but it was, but like back then mm-hmm. I remember like I was in college and it was like, why the fuck? Like Jim Webb was the, like, he would randomly talk about like the prison industrial complex and other, like at a time when nobody mm-hmm. spoke about that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. So he occasionally said things that were like kind of interesting, but you always were just like, yeah, but this dude is out of his fucking mind. Yeah. You know, but yeah. And then he, yeah, and then he ran for president for a minute. And then he, uh, I don't remember whether he either, he either formally endorsed Trump or it was just like, you know, well, there's no way I'm voting for Hillary. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think he was one of those guys. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was. Yeah. Like me and Mike. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm not, I'm not driving down to the elementary school <laughs> at eight o'clock in the morning yeah. to vote for some. Yeah, <laughs> other people do it. Um, yeah, so okay, so the so they the trial starts. Guy Pierce is interrogating Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, he's like he's asking him why he killed all those kids, and Samuel L. Jackson's like, "Yes, yeah, people died, but th- that's that's how you fight a war." <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, and then there's a thing where like the prosecutor's like, he's like, uh, "You said something right before." the 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 car the the violence happened he's like he's like what was it and he's like i don't remember he's like well we have it on tape he's like all right if you got it on tape that's what i said i said waste the motherfuckers (laughs) so so this is all like exculpatory yeah i love that you know what else i love i don't probably who knows if it was webb's decision but webb's just like and you know what else let's make it a black guy (laughs) yeah 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 that way you can't accuse me of shit. Right. The point is you're supposed to kill fucking Vietnamese POWs. You're supposed to blow little girls' legs off in Yemen. Yeah. And if you say anything back, the guy I fucking had to do it with was black. I mean, he does play that role very well. S- Sam Jackson, he plays the role pretty well in the That's movie. kind of disappointing like though. Like I don't yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't take I don't take actors' politics that seriously, but that's just mm-hmm. that's so flagrant. Mm-hmm. Like was it, I think I'm pretty sure Samuel Jackson was a Vietnam War protester. Yeah, I mean he would yeah. have to have been time wise. Because right? mm-hmm. I know I read somewhere I know he was <coughs> some type of student activist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. So then uh, during the trial, the prosecutor go he goes, uh, "I'd like to call in a surprise witness," and uh, the doors open, and it's the little girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! I called it. No, yeah. through the doors. <laughs> Through the doors walk uh, a a gray haired Vietnamese man, oh, and uh, shit. full circle. Yeah. yeah, and then and then the prosecutor is like, yep. "I'm actually from the woke military. First of all, I'd like to apologize, man. And yeah. if there's anything in this space that makes you feel uncomfortable or otherwise, <laughs> right. can this I get is you very anything? White space. <laughs> yeah, and I want you to feel you can communicate in a way that you feel comfortable. Um." Obviously, we'll be happy to deport him back to Vietnam for you. Whatever you do, <laughs> man. Yeah. And then Obama came out, and he was just like, "Look at him fighting the white devil's war." <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay, yeah. so he so comes so out, and it's the old Vietnamese guy that, yeah. that Samuel Jackson terrorized. Yeah. Now yeah. they they do this very quick. They start interrogating him. He's like, "Did Colonel Childers execute your radio operator in?" In Vietnam. Wait, I have a question, though. Yeah. Okay, this is legit my guess. Yeah. Is it, though, that what ends up happening is that this Vietnamese guy is like, yeah, because he's not a fucking pussy, and we were fighting a war. Massive respect. And there's, like, the bond <laughs> amongst soldiers. Yeah. Is that what happens? Eventually, yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. Is that, I'm, that was, like, a legit guess. Is not that what on, happens? Not yeah. on, not oh, I on fucking the... Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. The very, very end. Yeah. So they, they so interrogate him for a little to bit. Shoot him in the head. Yeah. We were fighting. And then did he look at the guy and say, like, did you ever serve in the fields? <laughs> 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 or were you just reading books in a fucking library? <laughs> yeah. Him and Sam Jackson yeah. fist bump. Him and Sam Jackson fist bump. Yep. 
Well, that yeah, so that happens. They ask him, they and then Tommy Lee Jones interrogates him, and he's like, you know, wouldn't you have acted the same way if you were in combat and and you could, you know, you could have saved lives? And he's like, yeah. So then, like, eventually, you know, they get to the end of the movie, they find out, they find Sam Jackson not guilty. Somebody uncovers the tape <sighs> of the children with the guns. With the guns. Um, yeah. <laughs> so so the kids were very. Those are those are very Beautiful bad kids. kids. Bad kids. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> Not good, folks. They had weapons. But this is really um, like basically what Bill Maher does say about like Israel like every week. Mm-hmm. You say they're seven-year-olds. I say they're aggressors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, I'd like to thank you Salt and Pepper. You're going to a bomb in a ba- inside a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Bless. And when you put a bomb on a baby, that baby isn't a baby anymore. I'd like to thank... <laughs> These I'd like to thank yeah, yeah. I'd like to thank Rahm Emanuel, <laughs> Vanilla Ice. <laughs> <laughs> These are not babies. These babies are dangerous. And the sooner, if liberals don't understand that, maybe they should go to Gaza. <laughs> oh wait, they won't. <laughs> All right. I'd like to thank Salt and Pepper, <laughs> o- Obi Trice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Salt and Pepper, Ari Emanuel. <laughs> And, and Torre. <laughs> so uh, at the end of the movie, yeah, they find Samuel L. Jackson not guilty. He goes out. And he's honorably so, discharged. He's honorably, honorably discharged from yeah. the Marines. Um, and then he goes out and, he's, and he faces the old Vietnamese guy and the guy salutes him. <laughs> yep. Fucking nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it's all about combat. And then Jim Webb comes out with his <laughs> mail order bride from Vietnam. <laughs> So yeah. I'll walk out at the sunset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great work, everybody. We're going to uh, the, the, the TGI Fridays over on Route 4. <laughs> have a little rap party. Thank you for all your hard work. All right. So there um, was an agenda. Because like some of these movies, like, we know that like the all of these, you know, the Pentagon, the CIA cooperate really closely with Hollywood. They help shape yeah. this stuff. Yeah. And so probably most people are just, you know, they don't know anything about politics. They don't care. But sometimes you have like, like Jim Webb has an agenda. Mm -hmm. Jim Webb definitely like has to have an agenda writing that script. Now, do you think that like it's a it's a conscious thing where they're like, I'm going to put this information out there or think in his case? Yeah. 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 I do. I do. Okay. Because I know he had a big I think he's one of those like guys like a big hard on about like coming home from Vietnam shit i i actually remember uh i don't remember the specifics but it was pretty funny because like he did like campaign for obama against romney Mm because he was like still in the senate Mm -hmm. and romney like of course being romney like you know said something that was probably like super accident like you know very offensive to veterans like probably something like yeah, I would have gone if I was a fucking bogaloid. You know, yeah, like, right, right, right. like very. Like, I, unfortunately, you know, I, had to, I had to go to school that yeah. week. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fortunately, I was getting a Mormon brain. <laughs> In a lot of ways, I was a soldier, a soldier of learning. Yeah, I was a soldier of cracking the books. Yeah. <laughs> so we left Vietnam to the dumb guys. <laughs> yeah, right. So like, yeah, you know, yeah, he just... probably said something like that. And then like, yeah. or you know, it was probably even more weird. It was probably mm-hmm. just like, you know, and a lot of people came back from Vietnam and because they couldn't get the ring out of their ears, they didn't invest properly. Yeah. And that was another problem. Like, he probably said, so. <laughs> yeah, they're, I, not, they're <laughs> not good with their money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like they weren't good with their money because they had this newfangled PTSD thing of the jing. <laughs> Anyways, I don't think that's real science. You got to be a go getter. <laughs> you got to be a go getter. Even if you had to, even if you had to waste a kid in front of you. I wasn't wasting kids because my dad had bigger ideas for me. Anyways, I got to wrap this up. Do you remember when he he was out campaigning and um, he was meeting with some people and like, I don't know what this, I don't remember. I just remember fragments, but somebody brought cookies and he literally was just like, ooh, these cookies are not good. Like, where do they come from? <laughs> Must have been the local 7-Eleven. Like, did you see? He just like went <laughs> in on the cookies. <laughs> We're like... You know, that's Mitt Romney is actually in a weird way very similar to Donald Trump. All Republicans are the same, yeah. except Trump's like the o- Trump is really legitimately is like the only conservative I find funny. Yeah. So apparently, there's a lot of movies that have uh, funding from the Pentagon. Um, there's some obvious ones. For example, Top Gun. When Top Gun was made, it, it made um, yeah. you know 
uh, the the Air Force got a lot of recruits, even though he's a Navy yeah. pilot. People don't really know yeah, the difference. Um, yeah. so, so all right, yeah, just yeah. just come on, sign the papers. But then here's some other ones that you wouldn't expect. Uh, the next Karate Kid had some Pentagon it. funding. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Fly Away Home with yeah. Jeff Daniels about birds. Yeah, it was about uh, these geese. It's about like geese, this yeah. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. does the Pentagon do in that movie? I to help like protect I don't some know. birds. I don't know. I think it maybe something to do with flying or you get yeah, when you get support from the Pentagon, it has to do with anything if it's like supply of military vehicles yeah. or if you're on a base, like if you want to film there, and even if it's like sound bites from helicopters, right. you need to like give them the, the script. Or, you, or it just it helps. Yeah. I don't think yeah. you need to necessarily, but mm-hmm. they will. Yeah. It's a big resource question. Yeah. 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 Um, and then here's probably the most bizarre Ernest Saves Christmas. <laughs> which <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think there's a family of jihadis living next door to me. <laughs> major influence on you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to kill Santa. <laughs> he just has to stop the uh, yeah, the Middle Eastern family. from. Uh, and then also there have been shows that have been denied Pentagon funding because, it, because they don't portray things the right way. For example, uh, Dr. Phil has been denied DOD funding, Department yeah. of Defense, which stands for Dr. Department Phil. of Defense. Yeah. Shouts Respect. out to a real one. Yep. Um, keeping it. Keeping it a hundred. Um, <laughs> did you did you see Doctor Phil had that? They had this uh, this Is young. He still on the show. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good for him. They had this young black girl on recently. I thought that he was, was like, like a thing of the past. <laughs> this young black girl was like, yeah. So I'm white. I hate when people act ghetto. I hate walking through this neighborhood. This girl's like, uh, but it looks like it might be fake. I don't know. I would guess it's probably probably. Yeah. Everything is fake. Um, but. Uh, um, Dr. Phil was denied Pentagon funding because of the way that they portrayed veterans and what they go through after war, which you don't see that a lot. Nope. 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 Probably Dr. Phil is probably one of the only people in pop culture that just was like, will actually talk to somebody who's dealing with the consequences of these horrifying experiences. Yeah, that, that's pretty revealing. Yeah. Um, also, in the movie Meet the Parents, I think the CIA specifically requested that Robert De Niro's character would not use any torture devices. Any C- any CIA actual CIA torture devices? Wow. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. So what do they need the CIA for to make that movie? He was like a former agent who like interrogated. No, I understand so that, that, but I'm saying there's no equipment or anything you need in that movie. Like fuck the CIA. What maybe just some f- some funding. Or some yeah, or they, or they like probably, you know what? Probably something more dumb than that. Like yeah. like. Robert spent like a weekend with like a real like CIA agent to yeah, learn how to yeah, terrorize yeah. Ben Still. Like yeah, Robert yeah. De Niro did the same fucking role he's done for to get decades, some, but right. this time he spoke to a CIA agent, so it's much more powerful. It was just to get some guy an autograph or something. Yeah. Oh, that's so lame. Okay. Equipment mm-hmm. and advising. Right, right, right. I Robert, can you sign my know. casino DVD, please? <laughs> <laughs> so could you just do us a favor? Just don't do any, like, fucking torture or anything because we yeah. sort of don't do that or whatnot or whatever. But I thought Casino was even better than Goodfellas because it's more you on screen, Mr. De Niro. Could you sign an autograph for us? All right, thanks. All right, I'm going to go pull this guy's pubic hair out. <laughs> yeah. And we picked him up in a sweep. I don't know who the fuck he is. But, but that's you know, the, fu- the world's a very dangerous place. But when you think back to that movie, they portrayed his character as like this guy who can who can just like, you know, let me see your wrist. And he's like watching your body language. He's like an expert on when really the CIA is probably just, yeah, hooking people's balls up to car batteries. Dude, just look up. Uh, look up this guy. I think his name was Rodriguez. He was like he did stuff in the 80s and like Latin America for the CIA, which like. Anybody, I mean, everywhere the CIA. But if you did shit mm-hmm. in Latin America or the Caribbean, mm-hmm. like, I mean, really anywhere, but just particularly, like, just the dirtiest shit imaginable and working with the dirtiest people. And and also not, like, in a place where you could even make the excuse of, like, well, it was complicated and we were going back up against, like, literally just, like, yeah, so this guy got elected on a platform of giving women prenatal care and uh, paying people to work on the banana plantations uh, living wage. And so we had to go down there and organize some people to burn some fucking nuns alive. <laughs> like that, like literally that type of shit. I'm not even exaggerating. Is El Salvador? Like, everywhere. 
Yeah. I mean, go, I mean, I mean, look, it still exists to today, man. The U.S. is responsible for e- even people like Lula being in jail. Like, there's mm-hmm. no doubt. But like, he his, but he was also in- involved with the torture program, and yeah. he went out and like spoke to 60 Minutes, mm-hmm. and just that is who's doing this. Mm-hmm. Like, he's literally just like, no, no, yeah, yeah, we got a guy. He was from uh, Johns Hopkins. <laughs> he was a good doctor. We put him back. He make him feel better. Then we put his head in a fucking ice locker, man. <laughs> like that. It is yeah. not like, you know, it's not like, yeah, we were able to read his post and understand what he was thinking. It was just like, sometimes you play fucking rough. Mm-hmm. Like it, just pure, like don't ever yeah. let that agency sell itself as some type of homeland bullshit. It is right. Like just even when you look at like people like Tenet and shit, even Tenet, like he looks like a fucking gangster. Yeah. John I mean, Brennan. John Brennan. No, Brent. Brent looks like a gangster too. I'm thinking yeah. of Tennant, who uh, I'm still yeah. yeah Tennant, Panetta doesn't look like a gangster. And then Bill Maher's like, "Thank you for your service, sir. It oh. is really <laughs> cool. <laughs> thank you for your service. I want to thank John Brennan, Superhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> John Brennan, Superhead, and George Stephanopoulos. <laughs> Next week I'll be at the Kung Pao Lounge <laughs> in Des Moines, Iowa." And then at Mohegan Sun in Hartford. All right, thanks everybody. You're a great panel. Yeah. Can you really quickly just kind of fill in some of those dots for me when you when you look at like CIA programs? So the CIA is is a lot of times in Latin America they were funding paramilitary groups. Like who are the people that they? Stop apologizing. Go go. Yeah. So talk if you're gonna interrupt my friend fucking embarrass me there's a thing called, it's called the school of the americas yeah. they train yeah, but but like but no i mean going back to i mean look even today they're trying to you know Regime change in Venezuela. You know, when Bolsonaro visited the United States, he went to CIA headquarters, which is like not typical protocol for really? a foreign head of state. Yeah, he yeah. literally visited CIA headquarters. So, but going back, I mean, everything. Like, and this is just not something that the average person like knows Guatemala. really or under- Look, in 2004, I mean, George, the Bush administration in Canada and France literally got yeah. together and just removed Aristide from power in Haiti. Mm-hmm. I mean, in 2010, Hillary Clinton essentially decided who would be president in Haiti in a contested election. She installed this guy, Sweet Mickey, who was like this really big. He's actually a, uh, it's kind of a crazy story. He's he's like the pre Trump. Mm-hmm. Like Haiti had Trump first. They were the forerunner, mm-hmm. although he's a lot smarter than Trump. But he was just like this. uh basically was like this really big pop star. He would perform on stage in a diaper and like grind on girls and stuff. Nice. But he was like tight with like the drug cartels and the military. And then they just decided like we kind of want to get back in power basically, but we can't run somebody that is like from the same old crew. So, oh, we'll just do this guy's like a big pop star. Let's try that. Uh, Praz worked for his campaign, helped organize it. And but and he basically i think he lost but he like was like i won't accept the election result and literally like he had like a meeting with hillary clinton just being like yeah he won like you know and again because he did he meet her in a diaper no he was it was so she was like what a nice diaper what you're a nice wearing diaper no no it's <laughs> actually great it really it really is like he, she rules he put on his suit man everything is everything it really is show business like he yeah. literally was just like you could see when you watch the footage of him, yeah, just the concept of like, because he is a talented performer, just like the concept of like, oh, performance, like 1993, I'm doing like salt and what pepper, like what, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, now I'm president. They like, made him the president. Same like great hate. posture looks like just, it's all just performance. But like, yeah, so this the, the CIA and, you know, the United States more generally, I mean, is just deposed conservatively like over 50 governments in Latin America in the 70s and 80s there was a thing called the Condor years where we coordinated with governments across Latin America to kill leftists Mm -hmm. everywhere Mm -hmm. Um, just indiscriminately like if you were do you think they'll kill me or you um, I think I might end up on a hit list at some point Mike I'm not sure you're big enough 
Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't think so. No, I don't. But I but honestly, what's crazy, though, like no bullshit mm-hmm. is is the heart attack gun not real us. But like in that's a good point, though, in the sense that like you read about like shit that they did and they still do to this day. Yeah. in Different ways. But like it was like that in 1970. Like it's like, OK, right. Yes, like the CIA killed Che. And you think like, right. There's this global war. Che, he's this major iconic figure. But you if you read in the archives, it is like, oh, this guy occasionally wrote a column. That somebody didn't like. Mm-hmm. They tortured him for three months, cut his head off. This woman was a school teacher who said that people deserve to have social insurance. Her stomach was cut open and thrown out of the plane. Like, yeah, like, like all like we would, in fact, in those environments, absolutely. Right. Yeah. For just sayings like no doubt. And yeah. we, we were complicit, not just complicit. We backed actively all of it. And to this day, we, you know, arm groups, we support far-right groups we support far-right governments we're trying to do regime change but i mean haiti's still essentially colonially occupied i mean yeah. like this is where i can start to right you but know. but because it's it's kind of hard for the average person to like fill in those dots and sort of yeah. trace the the i and i guess the the money trail too. who's making money off stuff like that and just like i guess how big these operations are because it's not something i don't know it, it's it, it's it's hard for me to certainly wrap my head around these types of things I mean, it all depends. I mean, but I, I think, I mean, on some level. But now they're, they're like, making Amazon shows about how Ven- Venezuela is going to nuke us. That is fucking wild. Which, so it's that like, is wild. But yeah. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, like, is it really, though? Like, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Like, you have, you know, someone comes to power. Yeah, but you don't who, know my who I was raised by, no, no, the no, environment, no, I, I get all of what that. I no, believed no, no. for so many years. I'm not talking about growing up reading all of that shit and knowing the specifics. I'm talking about the general concept mm. that there's an arrangement that works really well for a small group of interests and people. Someone else comes along and challenges that arrangement. There's going to be a reaction to it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think anybody can understand that concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. I totally get it. Yeah, most people enjoy reading about this stuff, but the broader concept that like yeah i'm a big fruit company or i'm coca-cola yeah, or whatever like, like that's what it is I yeah mean, even we're gonna it's gonna cut into our profits dude look at brazil i mm-hmm. mean i keep saying like like look at brazil lula lifted 40 million people out of poverty mm-hmm. and him and dilma were not he made a big effort like he had a time in his presidency where he got along with everybody from george bush to ahmadinejad he was not like it was very strategic, although clearly had a lot of problems with how colonial the U.S. is and its attitude. But he was very strategic. And you can correlate this whole process that was backed by the DOJ, that put him in jail, that supported the coup against her government, mm-hmm. this Lava Jato thing, that when she said they found this very big, um, like basically new oil deposits and these pre-salt layers, and she came out and she said, this is going to be Petrobras is going to do it. That's the state oil company. And all of the profits are going to get put into a trust for education and they're not going to be available for global exploitation. Mm-hmm. They're not, mm-hmm. right? And Petrobras, when you go back to the Snowden revelations, you remember how, like, what what is it the NSA spying on? One of their most aggressive targets was Brazil. And it wasn't just Dilma. It was the state oil company. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, like, yeah, that's yeah. how it fucking works. There's yeah. a lot of money to be made. Now you have, you know, as soon as that government was out of power, all you know, the, the Temer and now Bolsonaro say, sell off state assets. They open the Amazon to every type of, you know, logging, natural, uh, you know, mineral resources, mm-hmm. pharmaceutical companies. Mm-hmm. And all I that mean, money leaves Brazil pretty much yeah. and goes to yeah Absolutely. American company yeah and it doesn't go to normal American people either I mean but it goes right, of it course goes from the yeah peripheries to the center yeah so I think like the principle is not that hard to figure out right like it's yeah I mean just it's just big fucking small basically yeah right. it's got to be weird to be another country outside <laughs> of America and you're just like oh there's just this red white and blue shadow over everything that we do yeah you know definitely yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why I think it's... It's like know, a big flying monster that's just going to... That's another reason you know, that, you know, I'm so serious about, like, Bernie Sanders, man. I'll just say it for, like, one second. That's mm-hmm. like, yeah, he's not perfect, but there's no one else who's putting anything on the table he puts on in terms of foreign policy. And it's just so fucking amazing to me that, like, people who run around talking about how woke they are mm-hmm. don't give a shit. 
yeah. about you know Elizabeth Warren voted for every single military budget increase that Trump wants. Yeah, she's a point person for Raytheon in Massachusetts. Yeah, and you know like she is a hundred percent true. Yeah, and so and you're gonna talk about all of this. Yeah, and you're gonna talk about all this enlightened shit. But when you grow up like watching these movies forever, I it I don't know it does make you it it makes you be like who gives a shit. Elizabeth about Warren these other had a uh, story and they speak another language on in the line of fire. I'm just yeah. kidding. Or yeah. rules of engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to say could, that you do you a know, Warren impression. I just want to say, Colonel Childers, you're a hero. Okay. <laughs> I know that you killed eighty like a people. A South Park character. <laughs> you might have killed. Well, that's my first. This is my first attempt at a. Well, you know what I really wanted to do is like. You, you might have killed eighty people, but you did it for this country. That would that would be something she would right, and then and then Bernie would be like, well, with all due respect, I don't think that was so great to murder the Ebony children. They'd be like, oh, that was sexist. Yeah, he disagreed with her. Yeah. Yes, he did. That was a big meltdown because he was like, I have like Henry Kissinger literally is responsible for millions of people dying. Mm -hmm. Literally. He has a body everywhere. Chile, Laos, Cyprus, Cambodia, Vietnam, the business currently with China and Saudi Arabia. I mean, there's a whole world to lay to waste. And Hillary Clinton's like, he advises me. (laughs) Okay, great. I mean, it's it's disgusting. That's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. I was nobody, trying to think, though, nobody cares. if you can do a Warren impression. Mm-hmm. You know how Trump does that great thing, where he, which, I mean, it's not actually great, but it is funny, where he's always just like, you know, my people are great people, and they're good people, but they're tough, and they're angry. Like, he's, like we've just accepted as normal that he's always basically just like, one day I'm going to unleash all these fucking idiots to come to my rallies, <laughs> and they're going to engage mm-hmm. in discriminative political violence. Yeah, and it will somehow be justified because you said The Apprentice wasn't a good <laughs> show, and it was very mean to them, right? I want to see my Warren impression if I could do one would be her like, like aw shuck shit saying mm-hmm. the same thing, like, like you know my supporters are good people, yeah, they're good people, and they've been taken advantage of by the credit card companies, but you know they're also tough people, like just the you Warren. gotta get out there in the streets <laughs> and you gotta cut some fucking heads <laughs> like off. She's like, like <laughs> Warren, like threatening to unleash like what? a. Like a like a fucking base of people who are like I- I'm gluten free, mm-hmm. like on the country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like people who make like the American people know that we gotta go down to Latin America Dude, and said, we gotta ice some motherfuckers. Do you sound so, you know, honestly? If she sounded more like your character, I'd feel like it was it would be safer to nominate her. Yeah, as it is now, Trump is gonna clean her clock. Yeah. Unless the broader structural forces don't save her if people fuck up by nominating. <laughs> it is so funny that she <laughs> took the test and then she was like, see, look, I am one. Oh, my God. She it's, didn't even keep try to bury it. Or I have to. I mean, I just I find the like that's crazy, right? It's totally insane. And what's crazy to me is like, you know, in the context of the primary, I take it really seriously. And nominating Bernie is a once in a lifetime chance politically. And I'm disgusted that people who say they're left aren't taking that seriously, some people. But on the flip side, I'm also not, you know, like Trump needs to not be reelected. I think he's hilarious. I think it's whatever. Yeah. But he needs to go and he needed to not be there in the first place. So I take beating him really seriously. I'm not like, you know, and I do actually think Bernie's the best position to beat him. I do legitimately. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's just fucking incredible because you do have like, groups of people a lot of whom are like in the press where it's like they alternate between going like oh the rest of the country are just like fucking morons yeah. and they're all a bunch of pieces of shit and we can't talk to them we can't deal with them fuck them or they just project them so like oh no no i think everybody will like elizabeth warren i like elizabeth warren and it's like they won't yeah you know what i mean and and even stuff like everybody says like in and out, it's like considered rude, like mm-hmm. to bring up the Native American thing. Like everybody's yeah. just the Of course, mm-hmm. like if, if Bernie Sanders went around for forty years going, my name is actually <laughs> Jerome Creek. Yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I, I have a family that were Moorish. Like right. I mean, like right. it's you know okay. And even if you want to be super generous and say like that's what she believed growing up, it's still like she wrote that on her on her. Um, 
she wrote it on her. Um, when her, she applied for a job. Yes, when but she see, applied for a job, but, but she wrote it out. She yeah, didn't she check did. a box. She wrote it out. That's and what's so crazy up. is that they did this big Boston Globe piece where they showed. This is what's so crazy. The Boston Globe piece showed pretty definitively that like that didn't help her get her job. Okay, so then it's like, all right. So, first of all, no one gives a fuck. Like, no one. It's not like you know, some guy like was like voting and like. Pennsylvania's like, oh, it turns out the Boston Globe actually reported this pretty thoroughly yeah. in 2012. It didn't help her with the job, so <clears throat> it's totally fine that she had this like weird story about herself for decades. I'm not going to be bothered by that because I did my research. Okay, it's not going to make any fucking difference. And then what's also really funny is that like, I, I do 100% support affirmative action, absolutely, for a variety of historical and policy reasons. And all these fucking liberal people, they, they don't even notice what they're doing. They're literally being like, Oh, no, no, she got her job in her own merits. It wasn't an affirmative action. Mm. Thing. I was like, oh, so you're throwing everybody else yeah. who yeah. maybe did actually have that as a role in their fa- in their yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. hiring decision. Under she the actually bus. beat out an actual Native American to get that the job. That would be funny. It was yeah. actually, I remember one time I saw Trump, like, he was giving these, like, older uh, Native American guys this award. Wind talkers. It was Those fucking yeah. amazing. because, And this was perfect because all these liberal people were like, oh, my God, it was so offensive. Meanwhile... Two of the guys were really old and yeah. just kind of like, I don't know what the fuck is going on with this guy. <laughs> Two of them were laughing because yeah. Trump literally is giving them a word. He's like, I know we've all heard about Pocahontas. <laughs> and he just started doing it. And he it. tries not to do it, he too. <laughs> but he can't. <laughs> but he did it. But it was so endearing because he did it like the same way like you and I would be like, like, I don't know. Like, did you see Bill Maher last week? Like, he did yeah. it like, I know everybody's <laughs> talking about it. I mean. It would almost be rude if I did bring it up. I know you guys are probably doing the Pocahontas bit all the time. <laughs> let's just do the little, let's just riff on it. Yeah. Two weeks ago, I saw, he said, he said, Pocahontas is rising back up. Don't worry, we'll bury her again. <laughs> I don't think Sleepy Joe's up for it, so we'll take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's and so funny. what I'm saying is like, in these stupid circles, everybody's like, oh, you can't bring that up. That's so unfair, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, sure, we won't bring it up. And then what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. They're going to spend fucking billions of dollars yeah. to bring it up. And people are going to not like it. Yeah. It's just incredible. It's like people who literally oscillate between like, I can't believe that he said that and blah, 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 blah. And then on the other hand, like, oh, I don't think we should talk about that. It's not as if he isn't going to fuck like, like, oh, you know what? I just realized there was actually a listicle on BuzzFeed. And it's a little bit actually offensive to make fun of her because she might have genuinely thought it was her identity. All right, folks, let's take it out. Like, <laughs> like, like, like he would have fucking made the story up if she didn't give it to him. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and yeah. hers was like, yeah. oh yeah, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't explore her weaknesses in the primary and think strategically about them. We should just like fucking power through, give her Gatorades from the sidelines while she <laughs> runs. Never fucking challenge her on anything, and then sew it up and then have like a Harvard professor who said she's a Native American for decades run against like this fucking sociopath who <laughs> just like just the whole calculation just like you go from like whoa 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 Bernie raised his voice in a debate yeah, yeah. toxic masculinity <laughs> much right, right. to like yeah toxic masculinity <laughs> let's do it <laughs> and then like the huge swath of like normal people that are just like oh, whatever I'm I, fucking annoyed by all these people who cares yeah I do want to say that doing comedy, you do meet a lot of different kinds of people from, you know, different backgrounds, different worldviews. And uh, we know somebody this who... This is uh, typing. Oh. What? No. Oh. <laughs> we, know, we know somebody <laughs> who's a uh, big, was a big Hillary person. Yeah. Hates right. Bernie Sanders. Uh-huh. Uh, and because uh, you were talking about the rally. Right. And um, right. in the past, in the past, there was, there was a guy who said... Bernie, some some guy on Twitter, he said Bernie Sanders is a is a fake Jew. <laughs> and that's a fucking high bar if he's a fake Jew. And she didn't. <laughs> that guy reeks of Jew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of a reach. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she didn't retweet that tweet, but she did yeah. retweet that guy. And then there was somebody that tweeted about the rally. This was a black guy, and he said, uh, "Wow, look at Bernie's." audience they they're about as white as sean king and this bitch retweeted that wow <laughs> wow so yeah well, who is she she's a friend i don't know well, yeah mystery no, lady it's me. it's me it's me it's Malin. i don't yeah. believe it's you Malin. take your mask Thanks. take your mask off you know way too much about <laughs> guatemala to be that basic yeah it, it is such a like i 
I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, I, look, there's totally people who support Bernie and stuff, mm-hmm. but it, it is a one to one. Like, yeah. honestly, like if if you if somebody starts just like coming out with you with like, yeah, and then I grad dropped out of this grad program. My parents are subsidizing me. Like, yeah, it's like oh, you you definitely support Warren. But they like, love they love always like it's like. It's but they like, love to use people of color however they want well, it's to. Total. I mean, it's well, it's it's bec- yes. There's no doubt. There's that, and then there's also like, just which me, I don't even, even talk to people of color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's like even just like the acknowledgement of like massive politically political diversity within different communities like these like and just and it's like amazing like watching how they relate to like Ilan Omar and AOC it's like it is actually legitimately so disrespectful it's like mm-hmm. you this is what these women have been saying their entire political careers there's it would be insane for them to endorse anybody else mm. if you listen yep. to a single fucking word they yep. said but you didn't. Yeah. Because you're just like, like, ironically, I mean, you are, they're just like literally like looking at like AOC's hair. Yeah. No, like they yeah, have no, like f- yeah. they don't care about them as actual leaders and actual agents. And of course, yeah. it's like, it's such fucking, like, it's, like it's theater to them or something. Any, it's pure theater. Mm-hmm. Does anybody doubt for a second that even if Bernie could be 10 years younger and if AOC was 10 years older, Bernie would fucking back her for president? Like, it's so yeah. fucking obvious. I'm just, yeah, yeah. you know, that's, I think that is the part with like Bernie supporters where it just gets to a point where it's like, yeah, sure. The guy isn't like literally nobody's perfect, but like the stuff that comes at him is so fucking stupid and so relentless and so dishonest and mm. almost always presented by people who just suck so hard yeah. that it's just like. And then we just like look at like he really does have the best people. Yeah, it's like what do you want? Like no, it's like no. I yeah, fuck Ilan Omar, fuck AOC, fuck Cornell West, fuck Adolf Reed. <laughs> Fuck Killer Mike. <laughs> fuck Cardi B. Like, yeah, those are all like, like the celebrities who actually like understand politics support yeah. him, right? Yeah. The people who like celebrities who John actually, Mulaney donated to Bernie. John Mulaney, yeah, no, exactly. Mm-hmm. Fuck, even like, even like Cusack, right? Yeah. Like the Joker did too. Yeah. Oh, uh, Phoenix did. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Did you guys see that movie? No. Did you? No. Yeah. I don't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why. He was raised in a cult, wasn't he? He got Walking to choose Phoenix? his own name. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he was. Yeah, like a children of God. Is that why his thing. brother picked River? Uh, yeah. Honestly, mm. yeah. If you let an eight-year-old choose their name, yeah, it's gonna be something like that. Nice. Yeah. Pocahontas asked for my support, <laughs> <laughs> and I said no. I'm so into AOC Trump. <laughs> yeah, I think that has some. That's good. It does. Have <laughs> it does. <laughs> Everybody remember. I thought that she. She's a lightweight. Folks. <laughs> <laughs> Low energy. <Yeah. laughs> lightweight. They say they're plans, but they're they're medium posts. Am I crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Everybody's running around New York talking uh-huh. about plans. Meanwhile, they're blog posts that nobody's read. I read Tumblr. <laughs> Is the whole editorial staff at New York Magazine stupid? They must be stupid. <laughs> She's like Pocahontas, everybody. <laughs> it's like at the Trump rally when someone called Ted Cruz a pussy. <laughs> Trump goes, <laughs> she said something I'm not going to repeat. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> he's, just like, he's like, that was a very bad word. He said, <laughs> he said, but if you didn't hear, she said he's a pussy. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, if you didn't hear, she called him a pussy. <laughs> and, just like, and that was very bad. <laughs> We're not going to do that again. We don't talk that was like very that. Very bad of you. <laughs> Did you see the, oh, yeah. a lot of weird shit? Like the, I remember the, the other really funny thing that happened when Trump was running for president was like Ted Cruz. And it was like that was the most amazing. First of all, do you remember when, <laughs> when Trump retweeted the picture <laughs> of like like Melania, like like in like a bikini leg on like a fucking like, like leopard skin rug or something? <laughs> and then like a very legitimately like unfair very mean unflattering photo of ted cruz's wife like it did not look like her it yeah, looked yeah. like she had just like been caught in a rainstorm or something <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or she just realized who she was married to <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and like and so and, and he just and one of his fans literally did like a split it was just like you know like compare contrast or something and yeah. trump retweeted it and they were like and then the TV, they're like, like, 
what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. It's just like, I didn't start anything with the wife. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then, then Ted Cruz endorsed them. And then Ted Cruz endorsed them because he's a fucking cock. And, and then the other thing, though, was like, so Ted Cruz was in Indiana. And this was what was so fucking crazy about that election. Like, these two, like, literal, like, like actual biker guys are, like, getting in his face. They're like, Lion Ted, Lion Ted. And Ted Cruz being, like, a fucking dweeb can't just be like, all right, thanks, guys, whatever. Mm -hmm. He's going to, like, debate them and convince them right yeah yeah and it's fucking amazing because out of nowhere like they're calling lion ted and all this shit and then all of, out of nowhere like ted cruz when he was running said i'm gonna make the sand of syria glow like he said something truly awful and they were just like and you also said you're gonna make the sand of syria grow that glow that's gonna kill a lot of innocent men women and children awesome. in syria and it was like what? <laughs> and honestly, like Ted Cruz has that exact right. Like Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz is literally like, wait, you guys support the guy who's saying we need to like kill terrorism yeah. suspects relatives. Yeah. You're like giving me shit for that. And they're just like, and they're literally, like, I don't know. I don't yeah, know what he figurative. said. I know what you said. And that would kill a lot of innocent people. <laughs> <laughs> like, like they just like ended up hitting him with like the most woke point possible awesome <laughs> it was like you're promising to kill a lot of innocent <laughs> people in syria <laughs> and he's just like and, you, and that's what's great about it. like you know trump be like exactly and it's really bad folks you don't want to do it yeah i just see by the way i have to i uh, uh biden almost is like i feel like the only funny angle on him is his son like just sort of like dad come on yeah yeah i want to sit on the chinese board <laughs> what the fuck like that like that's kind of the only way all right, but you better get me a fucking board seat on Amtrak. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry that you like lost your husband. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, uh, your husband was super close to me yeah. too. He was like a great guy. Damn, dude, dude I love Tim. Similarly, the way that you <laughs> love Tim, in a way. <laughs> Just like, can I give oh, you like a back so, massage? Yeah, hey. <laughs> Do you ever need to like talk to anybody? Just like mm -hmm. get held. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's doing all like he's like he's like he's, you know he, he way worse like like his fingers are it's like yeah. like does it smell the same? No, no, not like you, like me. <laughs> Felix Biederman put out his put out like a fake press release from Joe Biden responding to Tulsi Gabbard and Hillary Clinton. It's just like he's like, all right, when ladies get out like this, all bets are off. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden is just like, all bets are off. <laughs> he's like, because I will tell you, I was the one who thought of leadership. <laughs> Do you find it uncomfortable that he's like literally decaying in front of us? It's Biden. Yeah. Not yeah. his teeth though. Those like are, I don't hate. Gonna... Like I don't hate him enough. Like I really don't like him, obviously. But I don't. I realize like watching him. Like I don't. He's fucking horrible. But I don't hate him. I don't have enough like personal contempt for him mm -hmm. to feel comfortable watching this happening. Like I think this is the fucking depressing. Like the eye bleeding and shit. I'm just like, oh man, just go hang out with your wife, bro. Yeah. Like not and not even just because like I don't like you and I don't want you to be president. Bernie's like, in way you? better shape. Yeah. Bernie's in infinitely better shape. Like er, Bernie's here. Yeah. Bernie's a hundred percent here. Yeah. I mean that that guy is like not here. It's it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if he dies, we'll just bury him in the pet cemetery and we'll, we'll get evil Bernie and that'll still be better. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. It would yeah. be better. Yeah. It would absolutely be better. It's like yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah, missing baby bra. <laughs> <laughs> You ever want to talk or anything? Like, <laughs> got to uh, fucking fly to uh, Trinidad and Tobago and fucking help those people with their, like, oil deposits and whatnot. But if you ever need to, like, talk or maybe just, like, feel good. like <laughs> he's, just smo he's smoking crack and fucking his brother's widow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it crack? Shout out to a real crack, one. I think it? it was crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't hear about crack. Yeah. I know yeah. it's what I heard. Smoking crack. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I turned on to this at one of my dad's MPA meetings. <laughs> <laughs> CEO of Visa's son is fucking awesome. But yeah, anyways, uh oh, why are you crying? 
No, don't feel bad. This is what baby bro would have wanted. Oh, Wait, which one? Which is which? Hunter. Is he the younger or the oldest? Younger oh, or oldest? I, th- I, I think I think he's he's younger. probably younger. Yeah, he's probably younger. He's totally. the younger one. They just buy like this. Um, Dude, we're literally Eskimo brothers. <laughs> except he's dead. <laughs> 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 He like goes to his brother's. He goes to his brother's grave, and he's like, "I'm taking real good care of her, bro. <laughs> yeah, I miss you every day." I think it's this. That what is this? Like he thinks he actually thinks it's super nice. That's what yeah. I think is like the perfect. Like when I look yeah, at him, yeah. is that he would actually think like, "Don't worry, bro. She's not out getting random D. I'm fucking <laughs> taking care of it. I got it locked down. <laughs> Keep it in the family." <laughs> I'm keeping it close, bro. <laughs> I will always be there for you. I will always be there for you, fucking older bro. Yeah. All right, I gotta go fly to Estonia. <laughs> there's, there's this human trafficking network that dad was talking to. You. <laughs> I guess they've got some regulatory burdens that require my expertise, bro. <laughs> All right, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta serve my country. <laughs> <laughs> I was serving my country on like the fucking gas prom subsidiary board. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my god! I think I think we got a wrap. All right, hour. We're at an hour and a half. Okay. Come on, I'm gonna good, edit this good content. Down. Thanks. Yeah, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you. Thanks for being here and check out the Michael Brooks Show wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube. Check it out on YouTube. And on YouTube is, uh, on yeah. Over 83,000 subs, man. Nice. Come on. It's one of the best shows if you want to learn about foreign policy. You know? Mm-hmm. We can't blow this election. And I listen all the time. And uh, you guys know what, you guys know the deal. Pa- sit down pod slash uh, patreon.com slash I'm a patron. Pod. It's worth it. Do it. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Mike's a patron. And um, yeah. Uh, sit down pod on Twitter. Sit down pot at gmail.com mm-hmm. and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>